Hey Patrick, have you ever heard of surreal numbers? No. <laughs> I've heard of surreal art. Have you you've heard of the real numbers? Yeah. Okay. So okay, that's that's good. So this is the meet today's topic. We'll talk about the surreal numbers and why they're awesome. So let's start. Let's go back a bit. So the first type of numbers we ever learned about were the naturals. Naturals were important because these are how we were able to count, right? They're all classics. One, two, we had three, four. These are pretty important numbers, I would think. I like me a good seven. <laughs> uh, these are important until we realized uh, we could use zero. And so that's where basically the only difference between the naturals and the whole numbers are is we added that. The rest is the same. We moved on. Zero is a really important uh, aspect for a lot of reasons. After this, we wanted to start calculating debt. And so what we did then was we started extending the number line the other direction. So we start here. We have one, two, three, four, so on. And then we had negative one, right? Negative two, negative three. These are the integers. So, and we notice that they're all still basically the whole numbers, it's just we just put a little minus sign in there just to kind of keep track of counting in the opposite direction. Right. Now, the, the next biggest jump was the rationals. So, if we have zero and we have one here, then we had a half, right? And we had a quarter. And we keep going, right? We keep going further and further in, that's an eighth, we have a sixteenth, right? Um, over here is two, right? Um, and you can keep you can keep subdividing so long as there's a ratio in between two sets of numbers. We can arrange them in such a way that you know it's a over b, and it's able to be fully properly divided, right? Um, but there's some numbers that are missing. There's some gaps in this number line, and this is where the set of reals kind of comes into play. So this is everything, right, that you and I typically think of when we think of numbers. So we have zero, we have one, two, three as usual, and then we have a number like pi, so 3.14, a bunch of digits afterwards. We still have our half, but we also have the square root of two. We have the golden ratio, all of that fits somewhere in here, right? But there's, and this seems like everything, right? This seems to be everything, big and small, every number, every like decimal place, you know, if you wanted something like 1.11111 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, all the way down, you could place that in there, right? But the thing about the problem with the reals is that there are still gaps in this line. And that's what the surreals is attempting, is attempting to sort of solve, is to cover all of the gaps in the reals. I feel like we're going too deep here. Let's go. <laughs> so now one of the things that, so, so in order to like kind of get to an example of what I'm talking about, it has to deal with the concept of infinity and cardinality and ordinality. And that's where I think where this is going to kind of make sense as to why this is important. So let's talk about cardinality real quick. So cardinality is a really simple concept. It's basically meaning, like, let's say you have a set of four things, right? Four things. How many things are in this set, Patrick? There are four things? There are four, there are four things. Okay. Right. Now, I put these numbers in here. They could be four apples. They could be four bananas. It could be just a number of four things. We say that this set's cardinality is four, right? That's just the kind of the, the amount of stuff in a set. Ordinality doesn't give about the amount. We only care about placement. So if I were to say this is a set of numbers, this number becomes first, 
and that goes before two, which then in turn becomes before three, and so on, right? That's what ordinality is caring about. And the reason why people get confused is because in our universe of the reals, these two tend to be the same. So when you have a set of four, this number is going to refer to the set of the number of, thi the number of things in this set, and it's going to refer to its place in a list. And so that's where people get confused when we're talking about things that are missing, because there are some numbers that can have different ordinality but the same cardinality. And that's when you start happening in with infinity. Oh. So you want you want to see an example of this? Yes. Okay. It's gonna, so we're gonna get weird. Now imagine a number. I like weird. We have an infinite number. We have, we, have an, we have a number with an infinite number of digits. And all of them have the digit 9. So it's infinitely going that way, right? That is a number. And you agree that it's an infinite number. And you can also agree it's nowhere within the reals. Right? Because if it's in here, then you can always add a number after it. So it's not, it's not in here, right? It's somewhere, if we were to go out further, say that's you know, infinity, right? Everything that's inside of here is a finite number, no matter how big it is. Mm -hmm. This number exists somewhere out of here. Does that make sense? So this is an, infin it's an infinite number, so it can't be in the reals. Because if it is in the reals, we always add one to it. Right. You can never add one to it. This number is infinitely going that way. Okay. So this is an infinite number. Okay. I'm going to make the claim that this number equals negative one. And I'll do more than that. I'm going to prove it to you. You're a bad man. So this is a pretty common proof. Um, so let's just take this number, and we'll just assign it the letter k, right? Infinite nines is letter k. Now, that's so k equals this. OK. I'm now going to multiply both sides by 10. So we have, I've done nothing to this number, because it's the same thing on both sides, right? Just based on the concept of algebra. Right? It's like, if I could just take out a 10, it's the same number. Right. Right? I'm now going to subtract these two together. So we have one. This is going to be nine k. All of these nines are going to cancel. Except for this nine. I didn't make that, that wasn't magic or anything. That that's a real proof that mathematicians use to like show that was called a that's called a ten attic number because it's in base ten, but it's an infinitely long number. That I've just shown that this value, if you want to call it that, is cardinality is the same as minus one. It seems now that seems wrong, right? Yes. Like it doesn't seem like that should be possible. No. But I think this is what I'm trying to get at is if you were to look back over here, right? This so this is where I think I'm trying to make my point. These two numbers have the same cardinality, right? They both refer to the same number of stuff at the end of the day. This is what happens when you deal with infinity. Weird stuff starts happening. Mm -hmm. When you have a number of infinite string of nines, that ends up equaling minus one. But if we were to place them in this proper location, Obviously, this number goes all the way out here. Minus 1 is right here, right? They don't belong on the same place in the number line, right? but they refer to the same number of stuff. And that's kind of where the surreals is getting into place, where we can place this number on a line somewhere. And we don't care what its value is in terms of like cardinality, but we can still place it on a number line. Whereas the reals, we couldn't place it on this line to begin with because we, we can't go past 
an infinite number. And the reason why we can't place about an infinite number is because Reals cares about cardinality, right? The idea of an infinite number being placed on this number line, either an infinite num infinitely large number or an infinitesimal number, you can't place it on this number line. But under the rules of surreals, we can place it on a number line. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to edit this out. The rules for making a surreal number are actually pretty simple. So we're going to start off with zero. That is zero. And then from here, we can construct one, and we can construct minus one. And we can keep going. So by using these rules, we can go out in infinite direction in both ways. So if we were to make our line, we start here at zero, then we can go to one, we can go to two, we can construct the whole numbers, right? That's easy. And then from here, we can then work inwards. So if we were to use zero, one, this is a half. Because it's the number, it's the simplest number between two points. Okay. So that's where a half kind of comes into play. And by using these rules, we can now construct everything in either direction and everything internally. And it's going to be a long process, but it's just sort of taking these rules and just kind of going to the extremes with them. So eventually, and this is where it gets crazy, right? We can eventually reach, and this is just a term that we use for simplicity. We should make this symbol omega. And that's going to refer to the first number beyond infinity. The first infinite number. We don't know what that, I don't know what that number is. I couldn't write it for you. But all I'll say is that after you've gone through an infinite number of the reals, and the number that comes after it, that's what this number is. And from there, we can then go the other extreme. No, many people say there's no number that comes after zero. There's no next number. I beg to differ. There is a number, one over omega, and that number comes after zero. You can th now, this is wrong. No, don't quote me on this, but I'll just say you can think of this number as if, if you were to have zero, an infinite number of zeros, and then one. If that helps you kind of imagine what this number would look like, you would have an infinite number of zeros before you were to get to one. If you want to equate that to the infinitesimal, the next step, which supposedly doesn't exist because it's infinitely, te it's, it's infinitely small, it's infinitesimal, that is the next portion. And then you can go in the other direction. That's the negative infinitesimal. And then we can add them, right? There'd be the next one after that would kind of go in the next spot. Over here, the next spot after omega is omega well, plus one. And we can just keep going. Now, to keep in mind, just because this takes place after zero doesn't mean it's the smallest value number. When you're certain, remember what we were saying, when you're dealing with that giant number with you know, an infinite string of nines, it ended up equaling minus one. The same kind of paradoxical thing could happen here. This number could be giant in terms of its cardinality, but it takes place after zero. And that's because we only care about placement. We don't care about cardinality. And that's what makes the surreals so cool. We fill in all of the gaps. You're right, numbers do get weird when you add infinity. When you get to infinity, yeah. Yeah.